Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the Fishlocker out on the shore. We have been blessed with an absolutely stunning day out on the shore today. Yeah. We have got very large spring tides, so James and I have decided we're going to go down and have a bit of a scrabble around in the rock pools. Yeah. We're going foraging. Yeah. Like I say, there are large spring tides at the moment, which means the tide's going to be going out a long way. Those are always the best ones to go foraging on, because areas that aren't usually uncovered get uncovered on these larger tides. James has got his wetsuit on. Yeah. We've both got our wetsuit shoes on. We've got a foraging hook, a foraging bucket. What do you think we're going to try and find? Some crabs, some lobsters, some seaweeds, some fish. Some starfish, some yeah. shells, yeah. anything we can find. We're just happy to be out on such a stunning day. The tide's going to be going out for about another hour and a half. So we're going to follow it all the way down to the low tide line and then back up again. Let's go. Yes. We are still we are still quite high up on the tide line here, but there are stacks and stacks of these. Periwinkles. Look at them done. Now these these are too small to keep. These are edible, you can eat these. We used to eat these when we were, well when we were kids it was a, it was a like a pastime food. I remember going and collecting these with my brothers and sisters and you'd sit and you'd boil them and you'd pick them out with a pin. But these are all too small, these are all undersized, they need to be like double that size. These are all grazers. They'll graze around on the rocks eating algae. Big old kelp there. Yeah. Oh, that is star ascidian on a piece of seaweed. But yeah, that's where we're going. We're just looking underneath these little patches of seaweed and inside of all these little crevices, aren't we, James? James has just said something quite interesting there. What did you say about what species we keep? We don't keep endangered species. We only keep species that's population is high. Yes. James is absolutely right there. All of the things that we would be, we would be foraging, we'd be taking. If anybody's watched our videos, you might find that I'm repeating certain parts of it, but every video is potentially yeah, somebody's first video. Oh, show me. Look. There, there, and oh there. yeah, you're right. There is a little hermit crab living inside that winkle shell. And oh, this one. Oh wow, yeah. Good spot, James. Shall we put them in our bag? Those are actually that is a Saint Piran's crab, that one. Look, that one's crawling out. Yeah. What these are is it's a little a little crab that has found an empty shell and it now lives inside of it. As I was saying, some of the some of the other videos will explain things that you've seen in these. If we um, if we find anything worth mentioning, like uh, something that's pregnant or something that's outside of a closed season or the minimum landing sizes, I will explain it as it's relevant. But yes, James, you are absolutely right. Found some pretty ones. Pretty helmets. Well done. This has really grown since the last time I was out. This seaweed is called sea spaghetti or thong weed and it gets really really thick on the ground. So thick so much you can't even walk because it just tangles you up. Oh James look, here is a lovely, lovely looking snake locks anemone. You see that there James? Oh yeah I saw one back there. Yeah, that is a purple one. Sometimes you get them when they're green don't you? I've never seen them when they were caught. Oh, what do them seagulls know? Fish. Yeah. The area that we're going to be looking for, all this all this area that you're standing on now, this is going to be high and dry within the next half an hour. All them seagulls are all waiting on the rocks down there. They're doing exactly the same as what we are. They're waiting for everything to be uncovered. Any fish to get trapped in pools, any starfish to get uncovered, anything like that. So we know we're in the right place, don't we? Yep, that's why I'm trying to save some of those hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are alright because they're protected inside of the shell. I always find these seaweeds really fascinating. We've got Irish moss. This is called pom-pom weed, you can see because it's just like a pom-pom. We have got the two types of green seaweeds. This is gutweed called intestinalis. You can see it's just like long tubes. And this is sea lettuce. This is 
uh, Ulverlak Choka. So those are the two, well, most easily recognisable ones. Both edible, both delicious. Oh, look. See that, James? Yeah. That there is a sea slug. Hi. See that pink one there? Yeah. That's what's called a sea lemon. Oh. Cummins. Those, those sea lemons come in all sorts of different colours. I found them for like purples, pinks, whites, yellows, all like variation of motley colours in between. But what I'm looking at, one. yeah. Oh yeah, good job. What I'm looking at here, these are some of my favourite seaweeds, these ones. It's called a furbelows kelp. And this just kind of reminds me of like a, a cravat, like an Austin Powers cravat. And this is the anchor in which they hold themselves onto rocks. You can see how strong it is. Yeah, we have the sea spaghetti. And this is serrated rack. You can tell it's serrated rack because the edges of it are serrated like a saw. Yeah. In one five metre square here, we've probably got 20 to 30 different types of seaweed and more more mollusks when I mean, we've got two types of limpets these are dog whelks these are actually carnivorous these will feed on on all those others yeah. let's work our way down into these deeper pools now this is where we're looking we're looking all down in, in likes of those cracks I oh, like that cave there. What have we got in there? Anything or nothing? Mm. No, no. Yeah, look, all I'm doing is just, I've just got a little underwater torch. Just shine it to the back of these holes. Of course, if there's going to be a lobster anywhere, it's going to be at the back of one of these. Usually with lobsters, the first thing you see is like them two red antenna waving round. Because it will sit at the back. Oh, yeah, cormorant. Because they'll sit at the back of a hole with its claws out and just wave its antennas around so if anything comes near it, they're like it's early warning. So quite often when you're coming up to these holes like this, all you'll see is just like a red antenna. There's another snake locks and anemone. Oh, well that shows you what we're looking for. You see that crab at the back of there, look? There's a brown edible crab at the back of that hole. Look. Now as it is, that crab's well undersized. That, that crab's probably less than half of what it needs to be. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to get it out there. You're doing all right? A little bit too, a little bit deep for you yet or not? No. No, good lad, that's why you got your wetsuit on. Oh yeah, that is like the textbook location where you'd expect to see a crab or a lobster. A bit of water inside a hole, but like I say, this area, this area is going to be uncovered. Oh, well, by a lot. This area here is probably going to be two and a half to three feet dry. So chances are, what's happened is last night through the tide, through the middle of the night, plus the tide rises and falls. The difference between high tide and low tide is about six and a quarter hours. So 12 hours ago, this tide was this low as well. So if these have been uncovered last night, when the tides come back in, they've probably bolted and they've gone for deeper water. So the places where we're most likely to find something is going to be right down there. Oh, I was going to say, sooner or later, there is going to be a wet bottom somewhere, isn't there? This, is, this sea spaghetti is really difficult to walk in. You're right, no, that's why you got your wetsuit on. Yeah. Open the doorway for us. Yeah. 
we'll work our way around the outside of there. Well, I wouldn't even know if there was anything in these poles. Because you can't see, can you James? You can't see anything in all this seaweed. Yeah. James has just found something brilliant, haven't you? Yep. Right, do you want to show us? Show us what you found. There's two edible crabs in that hole. There is. Well done. James was just looking around on these rocks by yourself, weren't you? Yep. And then look what you found. Two big edible crabs. Now, looking at them in there and knowing their behaviour, this one here is going to be a female. And that one there on top, protecting it, is going to be a male. They're paired up because the female there will be will be ready to be mated with soon. So he's looking after her, and as a reward, he gets to mate with her. Simple times. Yeah, the way that they the way that they grow crustaceans, all crustaceans, anything with a hard exoskeleton, in order for them to grow, they have to shed off their old shell, and then they expand, and then they harden up. When they're soft, they can't protect themselves. Also, when they're soft is when they're mated with. So as a reward for looking after her, he gets a chance to mate with her. These are quite interesting here, isn't it? Do you see these here, look? These three on this. They look a little bit like a dog whelk, don't they, James? Yeah. They look a little bit like one of these. But they're not. Those, these three here, are called a stingwinkle. Those three. They're all carnivorous, they all they all predate. In fact, they're all probably eating all of these big barnacles on here. They are quite rough, them barnacles, aren't you? All these big dead ones have probably been predated on by these. Oh, there's another one. Look, see? That's a big one. That is a bigger one, yep. Stingwinkles. What else have we got to talk about around here? Got some limpets. Alright, oh, well you know what this is, don't you James? Yep. See all of this white Keelworms. stuff? Keelworms. All of this on here, all of like the white parts, all caught in this rock, is the hard exoskeleton of a keelworm. It's a little polychaete worm that creates a calcium shell around itself. Like all the little fresh white bits at the end is all new. And a new growth. And you'll find loads of rocks down here covered in them. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, pink coral weed. Yeah. Right, we'll leave them to be. Mm -hmm. They are, they are, I would imagine, without measuring them, I would say that they're probably about two centimetres undersized. Plus, they're about to breed as well. So, like I was explaining earlier, there will be certain situations where we will leave things just because. It's just the breeding cycles, or they're not appropriate to keep. That's one of those situations. Like I won't, I won't disturb them because they're just about to breed. What else are we looking for? We're looking for some lobsters. Yeah. This is where we're going to find them. Got loads of your stingwinkles here. Dad, how can I really There's your stingwinkle. Like I say, they predate on the limpets, the barnacles, everything like that. That is a sign. You see there how all that sand has been kind of turned out of there. There will be a crab living at the back of that hole. Or even possibly down there. You can see because it's turned all that out. They just they're just like humans in that regard, and they like a clean house. So any of that debris, any of that sand of that muck, they wash it all out. So if you find like a little pile of sand like that that's been pushed out somewhere, there will be a hole nearby. <laughs> that seaweed's managed to tie itself up in a knot, look. Clarity in here is good, isn't it? Yeah. I did reach the capacity of my shorts. No, it didn't. Didn't listen to my own advice, according to James. Should have put my wetsuit on. These are quite interesting over here. I like these. 
Yeah, James, you see these here? Yeah. This is the anchor of that Furbelows kelp there, look. But look how knobbly it is. I heard you talking about it up there. Yeah, and there is another snake locks anemone on it. So you've got your, your golden kelp and your Furbelows kelp. And if I find any sugar kelp down there, I'll pick it up. Yes, see, see spaghetti. Yep, see spaghetti. That can tie up your legs. Yeah. Like shoelaces. Like shoelaces. Is that noise making you want to wee? There's another edible crab. This looks interesting here because there's a bit of broken shell there. And that, that requires a bit more investigation. Yeah. We were just walking past this hole here, and James, you just said to me, didn't you? You looked on, you looked in there, and you just said, "I think I can see an antenna." And all I did was, when I pulled the seaweed out like that, I saw one flash of an antenna, and then when I've moved the seaweed around, can you see those claws there? Its backside is just sticking out. Yeah, now it's claws. You see them? <laughs> right. What we're going to do is because I know that this hole goes in there and through there. Is I'm going to take my foraging hook here. That nearly lost again. Yeah, that I nearly lost in the seaweed. Yeah, look, those again. Are, there's the claws there. Look. I'm going to put the hook in on this side, and I'm going to tickle around, and hopefully that lobster in there, James, should turn around so its claws aren't there and its back should come out. And when its back comes out, grab it. By the back side. Yeah. So you just need to, when it puts its bum out, just get hold of its bum. All right, do you reckon we can do that? Yep. We're like, oh, not again, bro. Yeah, right. So, get ready. Don't start laughing, Grunt. It's moving. It's moving. I see a leg. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get slapping. No, no, it's just got hold of the hook. I can feel it. Girl of the hook, I can't, I can't pull the hook out, it's girl of it. There, look, see that antenna? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's also so it? Hopefully, if it'll let go of this hook, we'll be able to get it out of there. I'm gonna need to put the camera down for a second. Can you hold the camera, James? Right. right. Get ready to grab it if it... Just trying to get the hook behind it. There's its bum. Right, wait there. Get ready, James. Get ready. Right, grab it. Hold it tight. Right, just keep hold of it. Don't pull. Just keep hold of it. Right, what you need to do is just very gently take hold of it. Right, get hold of it. Two ones. Got it! Well done. Keep tight hold. Oh. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, you just We've have to keep it. tight hold of it like that. Well done. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Big claws, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, all we did was you could just see when it was in there, just see those red antennas sticking out. Congratulations. Talk to us about this lobster then, James. That is an absolutely fantastic lobster. So, how we got this lobster? 
start is... We did collect a bit of an audience, didn't we? Yeah. The beach that we're on here it is quite a popular beach. We've just come down here because it's, it's just a nice day. We thought we'd give it a try. And by the time we'd managed to get that lobster out, we had collected a bit of an audience. They were, they were very pleased. They were very proud of you, weren't they? Yeah. So, so what happened? So you were walking past and what yeah. did you see? Their antenna. You just saw an antenna, just like I'd said earlier, didn't I? Yeah. And then I put my hook in and we saw yeah. it turn round. Yep, yeah. and saw a spun. And then you you grabbed hold of its bum. Because if you yeah. got hold of its bum, it's, its claws can't reach you. Yep. Yeah. Right, tell me what you know about lobsters. So how oh, you, there he goes. So how do you know about lobsters? Is that claw right there is the cutter one, and that one right there is the cruncher one. Yeah, and so he's got small a, ones. He's got a big. Feeders. So you're saying he's got a big one on one side that he crunches stuff with. Yep. And he's got a little one on the other side, like a pair of scissors, to cut stuff up with. Yep. Then he's got small ones at the back for feeding him, and he's got a couple of legs for him to walk on, and the tail is a, is a type of type of tail it, that it claps, doesn't it? Yeah. Collapse to swim away like right. this. Right. How do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Because of those two dots. Right. Those two dots there. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little zoomed up bit. Where's them two dots? The where my fingers are. Yeah. And what are they? They're the bubbles. Yes. And Boys have two balls. And there's hooks. On yeah. The you need to be careful because there are little spikes in the tail, aren't yeah. there? That mouth is crazy, isn't it? Well done, James. That is a brilliant lobster. Very proud of you. Well done. Protect them. Cover them with seaweed. Oh, then you're going to put some seaweed in there with you. Good lad. Well done. We've done. <laughs> we've covered quite a bit of ground. One of the things that the videos don't properly, like, uh, properly portray is James and I have probably covered the best part of a third of a mile of shoreline here. Found loads of holes. Loads of small crabs, just one good lobster. James actually found it. <laughs> no need for me to come in future, is there? No. <laughs> you found a velvet swimming crab. You found a velvet swimming crab, you're gonna get it out with the hook? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to guide it out. Cool. Yeah, the tide has already started to turn. So we're gonna work our way back up the shore. Maybe turn some rocks over in some rock poles, eh? Yeah. Are we ready to have a look? Yeah. Oh, I don't think there's going to be anything under this one. Yes. Blimey. Whoa, there's a crab. Yeah, got him. It's a little furrowed crab. Oh, yeah. And there's another one, look. Whoa. But look at how many brittle stars are underneath this rock. <laughs> and that is a scale worm. I'm going to get my, my other camera out oh, for that. And I see some tiny crabs. Yeah. Right, I've had to get the other camera out for this just because I need to... A bit of lens. Oh. Those brittle stars, James. How many of them is there? There's stacks of them, isn't there? Yeah. And that there is a scale worm. Yeah. Dozens of them. What do we have to make sure when we're turning rocks over on the beach? Put it back where it was. Yes. And be careful. If you turn anything, if you pick anything up, put it back down. If you turn anything over, put it back down. This one yet? Yeah. This one now? Yes, I'll help you. It's alright, I'll get it by hand. Oh, more brittle stars and a little anemone. Okay, well, we have made our way almost back up to the high tide line. Yep. It's time to go back to the van, we'll get you changed, yep. we'll go home and get some bits and pieces and then we'll go for a bit of a cook-up, eh? Yep. <laughs> right, so we've got James changed and dried, we've been home and got some supplies and we're back out on the shore. We are just building up a little tiny bit of a fire there. James has been chopping all the bits of wood up, yep. but you've got your safety gloves on so everything's safe. Yep. PPE. And we have Mr. Lobster there waiting PPE, patiently. PPE. Usually when we, yeah, PPE is personal protective equipment. I thought I PPE. No. No, James. <laughs> Usually when we cook lobsters is we'll, we'll boil them. Boil them in seawater. 
today what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack it and clean it and then wrap it up in tin foil and cook it on the coals. Ready? Yeah! Let's get this fire going. Yes! Now we've got to build the fire up. This type of fire like this is great for building a bed of coals. And all you do is you just keep building it up like that. Like a really dangerous game of Jenga. While that's burning down to a bed of coals, I'm going to prep that lobster. I am now going to dispatch Mr. Lobster and I'm going to split him down the centre. I'm not going to show you doing it because there's some viewers that might not want to see that. But after he's been dispatched and split, I will show you about cleaning him. And there we have the lobsters that have been split. You can see that. Here's all the tail meat. These are the internal organs. It's always a bit of a contentious subject about the internal organs of crabs and lobsters. Now, I would never advise anyone to ever eat the internal organs of crabs or lobsters, simply because any harmful bacteria that this animal has ingested or come in contact with inside of its life will be concentrated in its internal organs. So I will wash these out. Take it down to the sea, wash them out. There will also be an intestine line running down the side of one of these. Take that out as well. I'll clean it off and I'll show you just before we wrap it up in tinfoil. There we go. I've cleaned out all of the internal organs in there. Yeah, so we've just got meat left. I've also, I've given the claws a bit of a knock with a rock. I'm now gonna wrap these up tight and we're gonna get them on the fire. Now, there is a little bit of fluid in here that is gonna help them steam. And then I'm gonna spread the coals out and we're gonna lay them on. There we go. You can go on there. And you can go on there. Whoa. You excited? Yep. You just ready for some food now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> you worked hard for that one. Yep. You did well. Can you hear them? Can you hear them, James? Sizzling? Yeah. Oh, it sounds good. Yeah. What we do have is we have some snorkelers, we have some spearfishing just down in the water over there, aren't they? Yeah. And it sounds like they've found a lobster. We think one of them's going to be soft. Yeah, they've found a lobster in it all and they've been trying to get it out for the past 45 minutes. Oh! You see that? Let me just let me just film you opening yours up. Go then. I'll lift yours up. Oh. You can tell it's gonna be good. Oh, you see all that steam coming out. You could tell it was gonna be good. You could tell it was gonna be good. Yeah. Oh, perfect. They've got it. Finally, they've got it. We're gonna start by eating them. Right, I need to get my butter ready. Oh yeah, my butter! Oh, the legs are so good. They're good? Yeah. I'm just Sorry. melting a bit of butter. Oh. Yeah. The tail meat, <coughs> what, you, you just eating your legs first? Yeah, I would legs first. I would pull some of the tail out because if you get your stick, look, mm -hmm. and just put it into the ends, you should be able to prise it out. <coughs> look, like this. All I'm doing is just hooking it out. Like that, look. Oh, look at that. See all the steam coming off it? Um, Whoa! Yeah. It's a little hard for me. Got a hand? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get that soft like stuff that. out. And just I'm trying pull to it get out the like soft this. stuff off. Because I don't really like the soft stuff. And just get over it, check it off, look. All right. See? There you go. Thank you. One for you. Thank you. And one for me. Cheers. Cheers. There you go. There's your melted butter. Right. This is just a creme brulee dish. 
with a bit of butter in there. What do you think tastes better? Cooked like this or cooked in a pan? Cooked like this. Cooked like this? Oh, because cooked. we own get, because both of us get our own halves. Hmm? Or should both get our own halves? Mm -hmm. Well, you eat more than half anyway. Yeah. When I cook them in a pan, you, you get more than half. The guys that are spearfishing down there, I think I think it's a guide who's taking out four people that haven't done it before. Yeah, they've really struggled. They've been trying to get one lobster out of the hole for about 45 minutes. And from what he could tell me, from what I could hear, it was a big male sat in the front and it was protecting a female at the back. And I said to you, didn't I? I said, if yeah. there's two in there, yeah. that one of them will be soft. And what did he say when he pulled it out? It's soft. It's soft. Yep. So what that is, is that's a male protecting a female while she's soft. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. Oh. Good. Very good. Do you want to try mine? No, I can try mine. Oh. Let me. Some. There is going to be a hard there. There is going to be a hard bit like that inside. No. So you're sorry. going to need to go like this and then slide it off. <laughs> See? Grab all the rest of it. There you go. Some more dunkings. Right, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to leave you with this butter. I'm going to start tidying up this fire a little bit. James and I are picking through the last little scraps of our lobster. And then when we finish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these empty shells and I'm going to take them down to the load. Well, almost. <laughs> We've not got far left, have we? Tide's nearly on us. Take them down to the waterline and drop them in there. So all the crabs and blennies and gobies, they can pick through the little tiny bits that we've missed. And then, what is it time for? Marshmallows. 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 Now it is... Marshmallow time. Can I have the pink one? Yes. Okay, cool. Just one at a time, James. One at a time, otherwise you'll end up getting burnt. Right, this is working smarter and not harder, isn't it? Because you don't burn your fingers when you're like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see mine. Just starting. Yep. Hot is it? <laughs> Good man. Now, for me, that is the perfect amount of toasting. Some people have been telling me that it's not done until it's black. <laughs> yeah, I like them when they're just a golden colour like that. I'm going to finish up our marshmallows and then I'm going to get going before the tide comes and cuts us off. I've got a cracking day down on the shore. James found a beauty of a lobster that tasted, uh, tasted amazing, didn't mm -hmm. he? I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. <laughs>